Welcome. This is the Algebra 1 end of course practices 2, question number 53. Question says, if the value of the variables x and y are positive, what expression represents the sum of 7 times the square root of 72, x to the 4th, y to the 6th, and 5 times the square root of 2, x to the 4th, y to the 6th? This is kind of a beast. I'm going to separate the two parts first and then work them. At the end, I'll show you some cheesy calculator trick that doesn't make me feel good that I'm going to tell it to you, but whatever. you got to pass the test, right? So the first thing I need to do for real is remember that the word sum, oops, didn't mean to pop that out. Uh, the word sum represents add. So it means I'm going to add these two things together. Now I'm going to split them off separately, and I'm going to do 7 times the square root of 72 x to the fourth y to the sixth before I go anywhere else. In order to get rid of that square root of 72 or work with it at least I need to do uh, put square root of 72 into simplest radical form which means I'm gonna find if there's any squares living inside or there are squares that are factors. When I say squares I mean like 2 times 2 is 4 so 4 would be a square. 3 times 3 is 9, that kind of stuff. It's easier to start closer to the number so you don't have to do as many steps. So I know that 8 times 8 is 64, 9 times 9 is 81, so that means the closest that's smaller than 72 would be 64. So I'm going to go and look at it in the fashion of just seeing if it's a factor. So I'm going to essentially divide. And apparently I've already done it. That's good news. So 72 divided by 64 doesn't give me a single number here. I need one number there, a whole number. So that doesn't make it a factor. Uh, 49 doesn't work, but as you can see, 72 divided by 36 gives me a whole number answer of 2. So that's important. What that means is 72 can be rewritten as 2 times 36. And for this problem, that's very helpful. So what we're going to do is say 72 is really the same thing as the square root of 36 times 2. Now, I know that the square root of 36 is 6 so I multiply that times the square root of 2, and that's another way to write square root of 72, which is 6 times the square root of 2. Now that's going to go times the 7 here. 6 times 7 is 42, so I can rewrite the number part of this as 42 times the square root of 2. My pen's sliding a little bit. Sorry about that. makes it look a little hideous, but it is what it is. I'll try to see if I can get it to reset really fast here. So 42 times the square root now I have to think about x to the 4th and y to the 6th. x to the 4th, uh, of, of course, can be reduced when I have it under the square root. Square root of x is the same thing as x to the 1 half power. So what I can do is use that information. I can multiply x to the 4th times x to the 1 half if I want. So really, I'm just doing 4 times 1 half, or 4 divided by 2 which gives me 2, which means that if I take the square root of x to the 4th, I really just take it outside the square root altogether, and I can do x to the second power. So really, if you have a square root, uh, you can just, how many groups of 2 are there? If there's any remainders, so say this was x to the 5th, you'd have 2 remainder 1. If it was 5 over 2 or x to the fifth power, then you'd leave 1x inside and you'd bring out x to the second power. But really we're just looking for groups of 2. So let's do the, the y to the 6 there. If I can get my eraser to work that would be nice. There we go. So when I'm dealing with y to the 6th, what I'm going to do is 6 divided by 2, which is y to the 3rd. So it essentially eliminates the uh, square root for the variables anyway, all together. That's a good thing. So I'm left with 42 times the square root of 2 times x to the second power times y to the third. To that, I'm going to add 5 times the square root of 2 x to the fourth y to the third, or y to the sixth, I'm sorry. I was thinking ahead. Like we said before, the uh, x to the fourth power under that square root becomes x to the second power. So my after my plus here, I'm going to end up with x to the second power. y to the sixth becomes y to the third, of course. And the square root of 2 is as far down as it can go, so it says square root 2, and I just bring the 5 up from the beginning. So really, that side didn't change that much. It's just that the x squared and the y to the third come out of that uh, square root altogether. Now since 
this whole section here and this whole section here are the same, it means I have like terms. So I can just add the two numbers together. 42 plus 5 is 47. So my final answer is 47 times the square root of 2, x to the second, y to the third. That's the mathematical way to get the answer, which is, of course, b. Now, that's kind of a long problem to do on test day. So maybe you don't want to do it, or maybe you just love punching the calculator, or maybe you don't understand what I just did. Uh, all those are you know, reasonable expectations in some cases. So what you can do is something that's really not that fair that it works, but it does. First off, I have to remember, of course, that I am adding things together. Uh, the calculator will allow you... There we go. That might work better. Okay, so the calculator will allow certain things, such as the ability to type in a variable. So I'm going to use the x variable here for graphing in a different way than I would normally use it. Uh, the other side of it is I need to assign a value for one of my variables. So for y, I'm just going to say that y is 5. That's completely random. And like I said, this method has no validity mathematically anyway, so I'm just basically making things up. So what I'm going to do is type in the whole thing with the addition and hit enter. So I need to do 7 times the square root of 72 and for the x I decided I was just going to use the x that's in the calculator and that's to the fourth power and then for my y I said I was going to use 5 so I'm going to need to do times 5 to the sixth power and I'm going to close that out because that's the end of the square root for that first one so it looks almost exactly like the other one except instead of uh, like the original problem except for the fact that y is 5 here and not just y and I'm adding them, so I need to hit plus, and it would be 5 times the square root of 2. And then I hit x to the fourth power times 5 to the sixth power, because we decided that y was 5, of course. So I'm going to close that out, I'm going to hit enter and it's going to give me this gigantic number. I might want to write that number down somewhere, so I'm going to write down 830850.4679. It will probably stay on my screen, but just in case. Now what I need to do is go back into the quest the answer choices and see if I can get this number to pop up again. Like I said, there's nothing mathematical about it. It just happens to work. So 37 square root of 2 and make sure you close the square root here because the que the answer doesn't have x squared and y to the third power in parentheses or in the uh, square root so I need to make sure I close it to make sure the calculator matches exactly then I deal with x squared and then we decided that y was 5 so 5 I should probably put times there times 5 to the third power so as you can see, it does not give me 830850. So that's not the right answer. Not all of them work this way, but this one works pretty well that way. So square root of 2, close it out. And then I get x to the second power. I'll write it so it's similar both ways. Times 5, which of course was our y, to the third power. This number and this number are exactly the same, which means the answer and the que the answer choice that we're going to choose for B is the same as the question would be when we type it in. I'm not happy that that works that way, but it's a really long problem that you may forget. And I know the end of course test is such a big part of your grade that if you lose your mind on test day for test anxiety, at least you've got something to hold on to. Otherwise, do it the real math way. It, it gives you some validity and like kind of feels good to do things the right way anyway. So good luck.